My name is Paul Carbantes. I'm uh, teaching at Lesbian Pierce in High School, which is in the English Montreal School Board. I've been here for 13 years, and I teach usually social studies, ethics and religious culture, personal orientation project, and uh, whatever else they could be. So depending on, I guess, what I'm teaching, it takes on different connotations, but really Digital citizenship is just being a good citizen online, using technology in a way that we feel is responsible, and coming up with our definitions for what responsible is online. Because our definition and the students' definition is different. They've grown up with technology, most of us haven't. Uh, so it's important to try to work together to figure out what is responsible behavior online. Uh, trying to understand that the way we represent ourselves online might not always be genuine itself. So people choose an Instagram picture they want to share, they might have chosen from a hundred images. And our students think, oh, like, this person is perfect, like, this is like the perfect situation, I want to be like this person. But what they don't know is that this person tried really hard to, to take that photo, and it took a hundred shoots, and they, they, there is filters, and they, it was set up. And they, and they don't appreciate the difference between like, genuine, uh, the genuine experience versus the online experience. And it's really important because uh, if not here, where else are they going to get that? I found that uh, it's really important to try to make it as practical as possible because they need to see, they need to see and feel almost. And they, you can, it's hard to do that in the, in the classroom with BC sometimes because it's, it might be more abstract for them. So anything you can do to make it more concrete, uh, sharing anecdotes, case studies with them, showing them news articles is one way. Uh, having them do practical uh, explorations themselves. Uh, so, for example, we did an activity uh, about their online persona where they had to partner up with someone and they each had to look for each other online and they had to report on what they found. We don't realize how searchable we are. So then when it came to, okay, my partner was able to find, answer all these questions about me and I was able to answer all these questions about my partner, if they were able to do it, then who else can do this? Uh, they had a lot of like wow like uh, like uh, moments like aha moments where they're like oh like maybe I, there, there are things that I can do to protect myself better than this. I think uh, we we've always relied on parents because they're stakeholders in this and like students are here six hours a day. But it can't just stop at the classroom and it it can't just stop at home. So it, there needs to be a concerted effort and also maybe to get them on board to also provide resources to them and what they can do at home. And I think that professionally, it's something that people might be reluctant to tackle, just like sex ed or talking about drug use and addictions. But it's one of those things that is really important uh, because, like I said before, where else are they going to get this from? Uh, this is coming. Like Students have the technology. They, they're on social media. It could be used uh, a really powerful tool for us. Uh, at the same time, they're already there. Uh, so I like, get... I know a lot of people are afraid of messing up, like what if I don't get this, uh, and what if the students know more about this than I do, like there's, there's a lot of hesitation, uh, a lot of effort, uh, can, like they fear that they might waste a lot of time investing time into a lesson that revolves around technology and then not going to plan, uh, but the same can be said about any lesson that we do in the classroom. And DC doesn't have to be, you don't have to plan a whole unit, DC could be you plan a 10 minute segment in, uh, in a lesson that you already have planned. People are uh, hesitant because they don't know what's out there. So, and I, I don't know the best way to share it, but definitely professional development doesn't, doesn't hurt. Uh, sharing the resources that we do find, uh, collabor increasing collaboration, uh, maintaining open lines of communication between all the stakeholders, uh, I think it's important also uh, that uh, whether it's school board, ministry, the schools, like it has to be a priority. If people see that it's a priority, people are going to spend more time on it. In, uh, in pop class, when I teach digital, digital citizenship, we talk about your online persona and the impact it might have later on in like, terms of job search and you're, you're, you're launching this career and then things coming back to haunt you or being very careful about what you share because it could have an impact. Uh, in an ethics class, it could be uh, talking about the implications of, of sh sharing personal information, but in a different way. Uh, so we talk about, say, cyberbullying, we talk about our online personas in terms of how do we behave online, and what is, what is the right way to behave online, is there a right way to behave online, 
and the difference between online behavior and in-person behavior and why are there differences. Like, there, there's so many different avenues you can take digital citizenship. Like we, we used to teach digital citizenship in the classroom before we had a, a term for it. Like just in a history class talking about the validity of online sources. So like what is a good online source? What isn't a good online source? How do you know? Is it peer reviewed? Uh, where did you find the source? Uh, so that's, that's a component of digital citizenship and this is something that we've been teaching all along but now we have, we can, we can kind of put it under this umbrella like this is another thing that we should be teaching our kids uh, because the inter internet's a wealth of resources but there's a, a lot of good stuff and a lot of bad stuff out there also.